<laughs> I'd like to welcome to this uh, to the podium Yan Mu, um, whose presentation is titled "Global Scale Forcing of South American Low-Level Jet and Associated Local Impacts of Precipitation Extremes." Yeah. So hi everyone, my name is Ian Mu. Um, so today I'm going to present global scale forcing of SAOJ and associate local impacts on precipitation extremes, uh, along with my co-authors, my PhD advisors, Dr. Charles Jones, Ella Kowalo, and Tsinghua Ding, and my next summer mentors, Lu Lin Xue and Chang Hai Liu. So first I want to start with what is SAOJ or the full name, the South American low-level jet. So uh, looking at the left figure here, uh, here's the South America continent, and here's the Andes mountain, which is one of the major mountains in the world. And we have the northeast trade winds that are coming from the east towards the Andes mountain. And then the Andes can block and deflect this wind. And then with a strengthening of the northerly flow, in the low levels of the massive atmosphere along this eastern slope and the Andes. We call this low level current the South American low level jet or SAOJ. And in terms of the South America, in general, we, uh, we, what we well known the Amazon basin as well as the biggest uh, Amazon uh, tropical forest in the world. It transports or provides a lot of moisture into the atmosphere through evapotranspiration. And this uh, moisture can be transported by the low-level jet downwind towards the La Plata Basin. So this transport is similar to like moisture transport like an atmosphere river, if it helps you to illustrate that. And in the La Plata Basin is a favorable region for the development of mesoscale convective systems. As the low-level jet, as Stephanie mentioned also, the low level jet transport moisture towards its exit region, and then the exit region can have moisture convergence, and that helps form deep convection in the exit region, which can lead to a convective system and therefore precipitation. So why do we care about cell J? As I ex sort of explained uh, here uh, in the Lapta the Basin, in South America, it is one of the richest agriculture basin in the world. Uh, Salgen can affect the moisture balance of this basin through moisture transport. A recent study shows there is an 80, uh, there's increasing rainfall during austral summer when the low level jet is the most frequent in that season in South America. And on the right, it's showing an extreme rainfall event caused by low level jet in Santa Catalina State in Brazil. So it can also impact pulp agriculture production because uh, Argentina, for example, is in the left of the basin. So significant floods and extreme events can impact uh, food production and lots of other climate extreme events impacts here. So here's just a uh, Satellite imagery showing the chain of a mesoscale convective system associated with a low-level jet event that caused this, uh, the, the video, which is located at the exit region of the low-level jet. So in the title, I was talking about global scale forcing. So what global scale forcing am I looking at? Uh, on the top left figure here, I'm focusing on the ENSO, PDO, and MGO. So ENSO, or El Nino Southern Oscillation, uh, refers to um, a global mechanism that drives climate. It has a warm phase called El Nino and a cold phase called La Nina. And then PDO, or the Pacific Decadal Oscillation, that Nish also mentioned, is a dominant year-round pattern of monthly uh, sea level surface, sea surface temperature anomalies in the northern Pacific. And the extreme phases of PDO also is similar to ENSO, has uh, as a warm or cold phases. So in terms of time scale, ENSO is 
about interannual six to 18 months, and then PDO is a more interdecadal scale from 20 to 30 years. So because they have uh, warm and cold phases, so when they are in the same phases, when they're in both in warm phases, for example, PDO can enhance the insole impacts on climate globally. And when they're in different phases, PDO, however, can minimize insole impacts. So a little bit about the MJO or the Madden Julian oscillation. So the MJO is basically a zonally oriented equatorial atmosphere disturbance that propagates eastward in the Pacific. It has a shorter life cycle of 40 to 60 days with eight different phases. Why do we care about that? Because the spatial temporal evolution of the South American low level jet is remotely, remotely forced by the Rossby wave trains. So when the MJO started in the Indian Ocean, it can cause deep convection initiated by MJO passage, and then the MJO can trigger a Rossby wave train that you can see here that are geopotential high anomalies that extends uh, through the South Pacific to the tip of South America, and then turns equatorial to reach subtropical South America, impacting the climate of South America. So that leads to my research objectives for this summer project. I want to answer what other trends in the frequency and intensity of the SOJ, and then what are the remote forcings, including different time scale remote forcing mechanisms uh, that drive these trends. And then lastly, what are the local impacts of SOJ on precipitation extremes? So first, uh, starting with the data I'm using, uh, Oceanic Nino Index to, to characterize ENSO and then NCEI PDO index for PDO. For, I'm also using a global analysis data that other interns mentioned before, error five at hourly resolution to uh, characterize SAOJ. So first, how do we define and identify SAOJ? We basically employed a new definition that we did recent, recently so I'm expanding this uh, low-level jet index using the Air 5 from 1957 to 2022, focusing on the Austrian summer when they're most frequent from November to March. So basically, we define a low-level jet in South America when the nighttime speed at 850 millibar and wind shear between 850 and 700 millibar exceeds uh, the corresponding 70 phase percentiles of the monthly frequency distribution average. So once we have that identified, we want to quantify the spatial extent of the low-level jet. So in this case, we have five contiguous regions. Then the spatial extent is identified by contiguous regions of these five regions with wind speeds that passes 10 meters per second at 8, 850 millibar. So with that uh, classification, we have defined three major types of level jet that occupies 99% of all cases for this 65 years period. The first one is the central type, or when the low-level jet is concentrated in the central Andes near Argentina and, and Bolivia. So this takes about, this covers about 39% of low level jet cases. Then the second one is the northern type of level jet that covers uh, Venezuela, Colombia, and northeastern Peru. So this one covers about 20% of all types. And then the last one is Andes type of level jet. That's when northern and central jet are, are occurring simultaneously. So that's the most frequent, about 40% of all cases. So what are the trends in the low-level jet frequency? On the left is the monthly frequency of low-level jet for each type. Here we are only looking at the dominant major three types, central, northern, and Andes level jet. So on the right is the trend of the frequency of the three major types. As you can see here, uh, central and central low level jet is decreasing in terms of frequency over the time series, and then northern and Andes are increasing in trend in terms of time series, and they all pass the significant test. 
Then we look at the subject wind intensity trends. In this case, only the northern level jet type wind speed is increasing, and that trend is significant. So our first conclusion, like for frequency trends, central low level jet has significant negative trends, and the northern Andes low level jet show positive trends. Combined with the low level jet wind intensity, where only northern low level jet is increasing. So we have the conclusion that the frequency and intensity of this level jet has been increased in the last 65 years. Then we look at the PDO and so annual frequencies classified with positive and negative phases. We found that central jet is more frequent where uh, northern, uh, more frequent during the warm phases and northern any low level jet are more frequent during the cold phases. And this is driven by the recent decades where there are more La Nina and cold PDO years occurring. So here we're looking at central level jet circulation anomalies. Um, the top is 850 millibar wind anomalies, and the, the shady color is just the wind climatology. And then on the bottom is 200 millibar wind, cloud, uh, wind anomalies during central level jet. And then on the right is the Rossby wave trains of geopotential type, geopotential high 200 millibar anomalies to, to characterize the Rossby wave train. So we conclude that El Nino plus warm PDO phases on top of the wave train forcing, and where we also see the enhanced subtropical jet favor the central level jet. That's why it's more frequent during the positive phase. So because um, northern low level jet and this type are more frequent during the uh, cold phases, we look at them together. We see basically a different uh, signs or path, uh, phases of Rossby wave train as they approaching South America. We also see an enhanced northeastern winds here in the northern Atlantic to flowing to northern North South America to favor the northern Andes. On top of that, there's also this La Nina and Co PDO provide thermal forcing that drive the Andes low level jet, Andes and northern low level jet during the cold phases. So although the wave trains phases don't change significantly for different Enzo PDO phases, but their spatial patterns are modified during those phases. And we found that the low level jet, they persist longer days in their favored uh, Enzo PDO phases. So central persists longer in the warm phases, northern and then this level jet persists longer in the cold phases. Because the level jet transport moisture, so if they persist longer, they can lead to a longer uh, longer rainfall events and more intense rainfall events, or we call precipitation extremes. So we look at precipitation extremes anomalies at 99th percentile. We found that during the positive phase when central jet is more dominant, there's more rainfall extremes event in the La Plata Basin. When northern Andes jet are more dominant during the cold phases, or um, they can transfer moisture into uh, the Western Amazon Basin and Paraguay, where they we will see more precipitation extremes. So the key takeaways is that uh, include the first, the frequency and intensity of northern South American low level jet has increased in the past 65 years. This uh, South J trends uh, are possibly remotely forced by ENSO and PDO phases. Uh, warm phases favor the central low level jet, while cold phases favor the northern and Andes low level jet. And although these Rossby wave trains phases do not change significantly by Enso PDO phases, but their spatial patterns were modified for, for different phases, which causes the low level jet ta uh, low level jet persists longer in their favored phases, leading to more precipitation extremes in their exit region. So my future work will look at how low level jet and MCS interact in South America using different trackers and how their, the, uh, the variability of their diurnal cycles. I will, I'm also planning to compare the reanalysis results with the uh, NCAR uh, Research Application Lab South American Group High Resolution Warp Simulations, as well looking at how the low level jet might change in future projections in different climate models and 
scenarios to help us forecast uh, precipitation extremes in the future. So uh, for acknowledgement, this feature is funded by Ankar Nasi program and, and the National Science, Science, Foundation, Science Foundation grant for Dr. Charles Jones and Ankar. I also want to thank uh, Nasi cohorts and everyone and my mentors who support me for this research. Thank you. All right. Do we have some questions from the audience? Yeah. I'm getting there. Thank you for that really interesting presentation. Um, you started out by talking a little bit about the MGO and showing us how the wave train was triggered through by the MGO. Um, is there um, a relationship between ENSO and the PDO and the occurrence of MGOs? Like, could you link that back? Yeah, so um, I'm not showing you here, but our recent work showed that uh, because MGO has different eight phases, so when there's MGO plus different phase of ENSO PDO, there's different enhancement of the level jet in different regions, which leads to in a different enhancement of rainfall in different spatial temporal regions. So we do believe there is a relationship with that, but it's just not presented here. Yeah. Great work. Um, so I have a question and a comment. I think it's great that you want to look at the SAG uh, simulations. Yeah, yeah. We worked on that. TAMS is part of one of those trackers, and and it would be really great to kind of make that connection with the interannual variability. My question is not so much about the interannual variability. I think this is great. It's more on the topography. As I look at South America, and you know, I see the Andes. They're much, um, not so much in altitude, but more on the side of the width of the Andes, like over 20 south. It's much more thicker yeah. than over zero degrees, right, or 10. And I'm, I'm asking you, say it was thicker closer to the tropics, would you expect those three categories as you describe them? Would you expect changes to that? Just your thoughts there about how in modulating the width of the topography across the latitudes, would that change the definitions of your three regions of the jet? Yeah, so, so currently in this research, basically we're trying to explain the trend of the level jet in terms of the climatology using large scale forcings. There are also other local mechanisms that drive the level jet that, that we're not looking at. So yeah, I do believe in the, for the central jet, where you mentioned the Andes is more wide, there is a, a like a previous theory, a paper about a cross Andes mechanism where the wave train or the wind or the trough crossing this part of the Andes that creates a favorable condition for the central jet where it seems more like a local mechanism because with the upper divergence and low level convergence that triggers the lower jet. For the, for the northern Andes, is still less explored. So that's why we're trying to explore more for this different type of level jet in terms of their forcing. Yes, I do agree that the topography would definitely play a role, even especially in the warp simulation. Any other questions? Righty. Thank you, Efren. <laughs> <laughs>